So, Andrew Tate, great to have you here. Thanks, People sir. are so terrified when talking about Harry and Meghan because they're worried that they're going to be accused of racism. You're clearly not worried about that. No, I'm not worried about that. I refuse to live in an absolute fantasy and people are dodging around the true issue. Uh, I'm a person of color myself, but I don't think that's why I'm inspired to speak the truth. The fact that racism is being used as a justification for the fact that she isn't liked by the majority of people is a cop-out. It's not the case. She does not will garner any kind of racism in day-to-day -day life. She's less dark-skinned than me, and I certainly haven't suffered from any racism. So I don't think race has anything to do with it. I think she's just a dislikable person and is trying to find a, another excuse for that, for people to treat her that way. And this fits into one of your bigger narratives, doesn't it? Which is that you're very worried that men today seem to be embracing the idea of being victims. And you say that one of the reasons that you are a resilient human being is because you have lived through trauma, but that trauma actually propelled you to success rather than bringing you down to victimhood. Yeah, the baseline of masculinity is that bad things are going to happen to you and you're going to absorb them and you're going to use them and to grow into a more competent individual. If you look at what society expects of men and what even females expect of men, they expect a man of competence. And for you to be competent, you have to have lived through some things. To be good at being a man, you have to have had a hard life. If you look at any superhero, his life was hard. This is the reality of it. And I think that the demasculinization of men is a genuine plague we are suffering with in the West. And Harry, in many ways, is he's a he's ended up a beacon for that. You know, so you think he has been emasculated by Meghan? To, to a degree, certainly. He certainly lost a lot of the respect of the people and his and the the people who were fans of the royal family. They've certainly lost a lot of their respect and. Megan has something to do with that. It's certainly the way she talks about the royal family as a whole, the way she talks to him and about him. There's certainly an element of people waiting for him to stand up and say, listen, that's the royal family. You can't talk that way. Or you decided to be with me. There were certain things you were expected to do. But he simply just allows her to demasculinize him in public and everybody feels uncomfortable with it. People also feel uncomfortable now to have conversations about race because yeah. it's so easy for the MSM to accuse you of racism. Now, I grew up believing in a colorblind world, and that's what I was told at school, that we yeah. shouldn't actually obsess about someone's race. Yeah. Now, if you sign up to that philosophy, you're described as being racist. And it feels to me like Megan has really utilised that. Well, there are certain buzzwords. There are certain words you can hide behind in modern society which people are not allowed to challenge. And it allows you to have ideas inside of a vacuum where you can develop these narratives that are never directly contested. And racism is one of them. You're completely right. People can just cry racist and you're not allowed to challenge the idea. And I stand up and say, I do not think that the problems with the public perception of Megan have anything to do with her skin colour whatsoever especially the fact that she isn't even particularly dark. I find it very strange that a lot of the people who are standing up for her, I've seen many liberals, uh, black liberals from all around the world who are standing up for her saying the race card, the race card. Why would you allow somebody to use the race card when they're not genuinely suffering from it? Doesn't that disrespect all the people who actually suffer from genuine racism? Well, I think, I think it does. So because, do I. Because there are so many contradictions in that Netflix series, because Megan actually says the only time she ever experienced racism was someone in L.A. calling her mum, who actually does have much darker yeah. skin than her, uh, the N-word. But actually, Megan said she had experienced no racism herself, yet she enters the royal family, and all of a sudden it helps her victim narrative to, to suggest that she's been a victim of racism. And actually, Actually, if you saw her wedding, I mean, the British public completely embraced her. Well, if the British public had a problem with race, I don't understand how we have a prime minister who's darker skinned than her, a mayor of London who's darker skinned than her. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense on any level. I, I would state that England is one of the least racist nations on the planet. And, and this is one of the things that's kind of detrimental. The people who are obsessed with race and obsessed with racism, constantly calling it out, they in many ways speak it into existence because most of us, like you said, like yourself, like myself, we don't see color. We treat people with respect. And if somebody's a likable person, they're a likable person. And if they're a dislikable person, they're a dislikable person. And their color has very little to do with it. It's just kind of ironic that nobody else wants to stand up and point out the glaringly obvious that she's not, nobody looks at her and thinks, wow, look how dark skinned you are. So it's kind of incredible that this this is the angle she's going down, and nobody else seems to want to mention it, and I don't understand why. Well, do you wonder if that is part of the phenomenon of Andrew Tate? Because remarkably now, actually, sometimes 
pointing out the bleedingly obvious, as you put it, is not possible in the MSM, is not possible on social media, where we have seen draconian restrictions on free speech over the past couple of years. Yeah, people are scared to say that water is wet. And then I come along and say water is wet and everybody secretly agrees. And that's why I have such a massive fan base. But I'm pointing out the obvious. And you're right. It's kind of scary that they've manipulated society to a point where we're going to pretend we don't see things and ignore our own eyes because we're afraid to talk. It's kind of scary. I mean, this is an issue about race and the royal family, etc. But you can apply it to many different things where people saw things with their own eyes and were afraid to comment on it. And that's the, that's where you truly enter the, the realms of slavery when you ignore your own senses because you're scared to speak up and say the truth. And I feel I'm in a semi-privileged position. They've attempted to cancel me. They have failed. I'm financially secure. And how did you do that? Because obviously for influencers these days, and obviously that means that you're one of these people who is very popular on social media, obviously you are reliant on these big tech platforms a lot of the time for your income. So how did you manage to subvert that when you were cancelled? Yeah, I was very financially secure before I decided to go loud mainstream on these platforms. So I knew my finances were always secure. And when they tried to cancel me, unfortunately for them, I'd reached a critical mass where people understood what I was saying was the truth and what I was saying was genuinely good for society. And after the last three years living through the imaginary pandemic, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm going to, the imaginary pandemic and all the other garbage, people are genuinely... Tell me what you mean by that. I mean by the fact that I'm not saying that COVID does not exist as a disease. I'm saying that when you control the semantics of situations and control the language, then you get to control how people react to them. If you say pandemic on repeat on the news, then people start saying pandemic. But as a whole, and I ask you this as a genuine question, did you see a pandemic? Not did you see people in masks, because people wore masks, fine. You saw the news. Yeah, everyone saw the news. But did you see with your own eyes a pandemic? Did you see people collapsing in the street? Did you see hospitals overrun? Did you see ambulances running back and forth? No, you did not. You did not see a pandemic. pandemic of disinformation coming from the mainstream media. And I think people are waking up to it. But I also actually feel very sorry for folk who still feel frightened because you've still got the New York Times. You've still got the independent newspaper. You've still got the gun. You've still got CNN pushing a narrative of fear. But this shows how this shows how important it is for them to teach us to ignore our own eyes because you don't see a pandemic, but you still walk around and talk about a pandemic. Once they can ignore you, once they can convince you to ignore your own senses, then the slavery is complete. They no longer need to actually change reality. They can just tell you the sky is green and you will sit and you will comply. And that's what they're scared of. They're scared of people like me inspiring people to actually stand up and say, no, I don't see that. And I disagree with it. And my cancellation came at a point where people have lost a lot of faith in traditional media mechanisms. They've lost faith in traditional social media platforms. These, so they might re- have helped you. Well, absolutely, because people have sat and realized they've been lied to and they're cons- consistently being lied to. And if you want new information and the truth, or even if you just want a different point of view to come to your own conclusions based on polarizing viewpoints, you're going to have to go to different places. And that's why their attempt to cancel me has failed. And people will seek me out wherever I go on the internet because they know I speak the truth. People who have just heard of you through the mainstream media, though, would say you are racist, you are sexist, you are misogynist. Yeah, of course they would. Yeah. And that's the thing that's so crazy. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, they call me racist. I'm mixed race with, of, uh, to begin with. And yeah, it's weaponized virtue. If you have any kind of opinion on anything, you're going to have a degree of the population who's upset with your opinion. It doesn't matter if your opinion is the earth is round. There's people who out there who believe the earth is flat Mm -hmm. and they're going to be genuinely upset with you. So once the mainstream media decides that you are a dangerous person because you inspire people to think, they're going to come along and they're going to weaponize virtue. They're going to choose a buzzword, racism, homophobic, misogyny, some buzzword that you can't argue against. They're going to take it. They're going to slap it on you. They're going to whip it up in the media machine and try and convince the world that you're somehow a dangerous person and you're a bad person and your ideas should be ignored. And they failed with me absolutely and utterly. And people are starting to realize that they simply lie. And now you're back on Twitter. You you were telling me you left the platform when you were first banned with 88,000 followers. How many do you have after a couple of weeks? Yeah, I've been back two weeks now. I have 2.9 million, I think. So, uh, and, and Is that down to Elon Musk? Was he the person who let you back on? Yeah, and Elon is truly a hero of free speech, and he understands we're entering, we were entering a draconian age of genuine... It was genuinely scary where we were heading, and now I start to feel like there's some hope. We're putting a crack in the matrix and a crack in the dam, and I think a lot of people are fed up with having ideas forced down their throat. But it's important that we stand up and talk about these things because it's happening on every level, even from the World Cup to this pandemic to ignoring the the imaginary race card in Netflix documentaries. There are so many people not pointing out obvious things in the world that it's it's getting pretty scary to live in this false reality. We need people to just stand up and say, no, this is absolute garbage.
Andrew Tate. Thank so you. great to have you. Thank, thank you, you for being here today. Thank you very much.